Hello. <laughs> this is a Facebook Live. We are going to do a bit of an AMA here. Um, I just really want you to come in and ask me all of your burning questions from Mythbusters, from anything that uh, I've done in my past, Thrill Factor, um, <laughs> anything that's come up in the past. Uh, I've had a long history of very weird and wild different things to do. Um, so uh, hopefully my friend Ginny is going to come on here with me and moderate. She is uh, doing the Explore Media with me and we've, we've been working on this Kickstarter. Oh, there she is. I'm going to add her. Whee! <laughs> Wow, so many people asked to add that it just all went down to the bottom. Hello. I, I have to admit, I am really new to doing these. So if it takes me a minute to figure out how, this is why. <laughs> oh, look at everybody who's watching. This is so awesome. Um, hello there. Um, would, should I bring people to camera? We can do that. Oh, there's Jenny. Sorry. Jenny, where are you? Why is this so hard for me? <laughs> yes, that's why it's live. Oh my gosh. Look, everybody who's coming in. Thank you. There we go, Jenny. I'm bringing... That took me way longer than it should have. I am doing good today. Hi, Jenny. Hey. <laughs> that took me so much longer than I expected to figure out. I guess I should have practiced this, but that's not how I do things. So can you see all the questions that are coming up? It's pretty fun. Hello. Most like I'm getting like a highs and a lot of how are you doing? Hello from Arkansas and California. Look at how many people are watching from all over. Hello from Munich. Oh my gosh. This is, this, I guess we're at a good time zone right now. So I'm waiting for like the really good questions. I want to hear, um, try to find something I haven't been asked before. Like everybody knows my favorite myths by now, right? <laughs> so what was the thing that I was asked to do on Mythbusters that creeped me out the most? Um, that will go between, let's see, washing Adam's feet um, because he had some questionable hygiene in the foot region, but it was part of something I had to do when we were testing vodka myths. Uh, <laughs> and, um, or it could have been, oh no, no, no. We had to collect the genetic legacy from everybody on the team for a myth we were doing about Civil War mini ball going into a petticoat and creating a virgin birth, which clearly it cannot happen. But um, this was pretty scrappy back when we started the show and we sourced everything ourselves, including genetic legacy, which is also known as sperm and we were only allowed to say that once in the episode because uh, otherwise it would have been um i don't know too salacious so <laughs> everybody had to go home and bring in a sample i mean everybody who could but i we had to collect that Whew. do i have bitcoin actually i do have a little bitcoin i am extremely interested in what happens with cryptocurrency good day australia <laughs> Pineapple on pizza? Mm, rarely. I don't order it, but if it shows up, I'm not going to turn down pizza of any sort because that's kind of my favorite food. It, it really is. Um, especially the Napolitano thin crust stuff. Love it. Mythbusters was the reason that you wanted to become an engineer. I've heard that a lot and I can't tell you how happy that that makes me. Um, I'm going to see if I can bring people in to ask questions in person. So let's try this. 
Let's see if we can get a couple live questions. But until then, what's the name of the skinny dude behind you? That's George. Uh, when I was a little kid and I was scared of the, the, the wind that would open and close the door, uh, my parents would say, that's just George. He's the friendly ghost. He lives in the house. And so uh, when I got the skeleton, which was an homage to my kindergarten teacher, he used to keep a skeleton in the closet, I decided to name him George. Uh, my parents have a new ghost now. His name's Roy. If we're all very weird most hardcore injury you or a colleague took mostly you okay on set twice i um dislocated my knee once cameras are off uh it's lunchtime and i'm rushing around to get ballistics gel made and uh a bucket spilled and i slipped my leg went one way and the other way i dislocated my knee and um i was having a real hard time popping it back into place totally gives you the creeps i know but at the time it was when i was still interning and didn't have health insurance so i was laying on the floor screaming and the australians came and i was like don't call an ambulance somebody just drive me to the hospital they were horrified i'm like i can't afford it um yeah so i had kind of a bad knee and uh it happened again during the ice episode but since then i've had surgery and it is stronger than it's ever been um some of the other accidents, Jamie got cut in the face when a grappling hook from the ceiling smashed him. Uh, let's see, we had, oh God, Adam cut his finger pretty bad. And most of our injuries, I gotta say, funny enough, most of our injuries are from the ballistics shields, which was a safety glass. They were like 200 pounds each and you'd have to walk them like this to get them onto site. But they were so heavy if they fell on you, I, we have had broken fingers, we've had bad backs, we've had smushed interns. Hmm. Am I still prohibited from talking about the cannonball incident? No, I think I've explained that one a lot. Cannonball, bust through a neighborhood. Uh, I think I've, all the court cases are settled on that. I would just like to say it, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> Do I like Marvel movies? Um, yeah, definitely. I'm still looking for new myths. It's like something that's still stuck in my head. I can't stop. Um, it's, it's every time I'm watching a movie, I see, oh, there's a myth there. There's a myth there. People are always giving them to me still. Seafood restaurants in San Francisco, like my favorite ones or just that they're awesome. Uh, I uh, personally am a fan of, let's see. I mean, I love uh, like Hog Island oysters is really, good um hook and fish very very good uh <laughs> I'm, I'm a big fan of um fish and sausalito there's tons hi from new zealand and mythbusters is your favorite show well hopefully like crash this world that was the uh new one that i've been working on it's on discovery and discovery go but since then you know what's funny is i've done so many shows um especially with tori we did one called thrill factor which was the the science of thrill rides which was basically riding roller coasters every freaking day. What am I working on now? Well, funny you should ask. The reason we're doing this AMA is sort of a thank you because uh, we're, we're throwing down a Kickstarter where um, we are raising money uh, to help launch Explorer Media, which is smart television streaming for kids teens, tweens, and family viewing. Um, it's basically like, it, you remember how Mythbusters, people started watching it in classrooms and using them for lessons? Uh, it's, it's like that, but made for it. Short format content that's high production value that we like to call edutainment, but uh, you also get a lesson plan that aligns with uh, the curriculum standards. So, it's really going to be helpful for teachers, remote learning, parents, or people that just really want to watch something that's both entertaining and has a little takeaway. So uh, if you do want to go check out that Kickstarter, go ahead. I'm, all the backers are getting some pretty cool perks. There's some cool stuff coming up. But uh, I think that's where Crash Test World is going to be based uh, after this. Airplane on a treadmill versus helicopter on a turntable. <laughs> airplane on a treadmill. Um, what's the name of the puppy? Are you talking about the skeleton puppy? I, you know, I should call it Gertrude after my 
puppy, but if somebody wants to nominate a name, I don't really want to call the skeleton Gertrude because, you know, I already have one Gertrude. Um, one funny story about Gertrude is I have, I did an episode uh, in Loved to Death on uh, Oddities for the Science Channel. And as a gift, they gave me a French bulldog skeleton. So I put that French bulldog skeleton in my living room. And for some reason, my dog, who's touch on the senile side, she's a little bit blind and a little bit deaf. But uh, every day she go and, s and she'll go up to the skeleton and sniff its butt. Yeah, she sniffs the skeleton's butt as if it's a real dog every single day. I don't know if she just keeps forgetting and sees a shape, but maybe dog butt transcends death. I don't know. <laughs> do you still see uh, the old Mythbusters? I, I do actually. Um, not just the, the people from the show. Uh, Tori and I have always been really good friends and constantly have pizza dates. Um, Jamie's hiding in a bunker somewhere, I'm pretty sure, until COVID's over. Uh, but I, I see a lot of the behind the scenes people are my best friends, producers and showrunners. And I mean, I keep up with all of them. They, they were my family. Do I still make gun cotton? No. That was horrible. It burned your nose, burned in the shop. Uh, yeah, not a big fan. Thank you for telling me I'm awesome. And you just feel like sharing. You got your vaccine yesterday. Congratulations. I'm a big, I, I am a big fan of people getting their vaccines. I'm a clearly a believer in science and uh, I, I want everybody to get them so that we don't have some sort of crazy mutant strain that comes back and puts us into lockdown again because I was losing my mind. I, I seriously started throwing knives in the garage into a target made of Amazon boxes. Yeah. Um, do I keep any souvenirs? For Mythbusters. Uh, yeah, actually, I do have a couple on my shelves. This, here. Oh my God, this was heavy. Um, bear claws from bear episode, just in case, you know, zombies attack and I need another way of, <laughs> but it's a little heavy. I think I need to work on that. Um, let's see, here are some of the blow dart guns from the Ninja Myth. Uh, we really didn't need to add the pretty dragon heads, but I can't just leave anything alone. I have to fancy it up. That's just one of my things I did on Mythbusters. Um, I have a neon sign back there. Definitely have some laser sighted BB guns. Yeah, I think that was just for fun though. <laughs> have I, I've never had poutine. Nope. Did Tori break his nose when he flipped the bike? Dude, when Tori flipped the bike, he didn't get hurt. He scratched his sunglasses. That's it. He, he, it looked like he smashed his face. Uh, by the way, I would like to say once again, I, I, it was sarcasm. I wasn't really daring him to jump the bike. That is all on him. <laughs> oh, these are great questions. You've been trying to buy the gunpowder art for years. I actually, I never sell it because I, as far as the art goes, I never want to make it for an audience. I guess I'm not, I guess I'm not a real artist in that I have not made money off of it. I, I raise, I do fundraisers. Um, and so I made a special print of one of my black powder paintings uh, as a perk for the Kickstarter, but um, at a very low level, like I think it's only like 10 bucks, um, five bucks, 10 bucks, I think. I should look, you can get a digital download of it. So you don't have to buy it. You can just throw down for a Kickstarter. Um, and if you want, that could also, you could give a subscription to a kid in an underserved area. That's, that's one of the things we're doing is, is trying to get summer learning going because a lot of kids are falling behind. So we're trying to get kids in areas that maybe didn't get to go back to school, um, some free subscriptions. So if you don't have a kid, you can sponsor one. Do I miss Jamie's beard? I mean, I have pictures of it. Let's see, look. See that Mythbusters poster right back there? There you go. Uh, what I miss the most is Grant doing impersonations of it. Every time we did a talk, he would tell his Jamie stories like this. And it, it just, it cracked me up every single time. 
I'm loving this. Hello from Texas. You love my book. Thank you. Appreciate that. Did I enjoy watching Tori hurt himself? No, but if it didn't hurt and it was funny, that's funny, right? Like we all watch those videos. Um, the most fun episode of Mythbusters. Oh, you miss Grant. I did too. Uh, there were a lot of fun episodes of Mythbusters, but uh, you know, we had a weirdly good time doing the one where we had to do a MacGyver myth, which was to create an ultralight out of duct tape, bamboo, and a lawnmower. Um, there was a moment there where we believed so hard that it was going to work that we made plans for what was going to happen after it went off the side of the cliff and then it would circle the quarry and then we'd land it back here. And the behind the scenes people were laughing at us because everybody knew it wasn't going to work, but we had put so much soul and heart in it when, and we tried to do all the math, but we really thought it was going to work. And then when it fell off the cliff like this, we all looked at each other and just, we started cracking up. We're like, why do we think that would ever work? What's my most co favorite country I've been to? Oh, that's hard. That's like apples and oranges kind of thing. I really had a good time in New Zealand. Um, God, Turkey was beautiful. Egypt. I got to go to Egypt in 1999 and just, oh, it was breathtaking. Did you really have a panic attack on Mythbusters during Chinese water drop? Yes, I was actual crying. I'm not a good actress. I was actual crying. Um, I'm gonna try to, there's a lot of questions. Do I have, oh, just a lot of nice things being said. <laughs> chicken wings, what do you dip in it? There's a wrong answer to that. Well, chicken wings are already in that awesome sauce, but don't you just chick, isn't it just blue cheese? Just guessing. Yes, I've been to Ireland. Um, I went by myself and toured around. It was very cool. Okay, I want a really good question here. Uh, oh, it sounds like you loved the Thrill Ride show. You know, there was one episode of that where it was a Halloween episode where we had to do the uh, thrill of fear. Um, and we tried to scientifically measure it and we were covered in all of this equipment and made it through two haunted houses that were over an hour long and I have a really wild imagination I was screaming the entire time I wonder if they still put that episode on science channel because I legit somebody one of the actors touched me on the shoulder and I didn't mean to but just I turned around and just went bam and hit the poor actor I was like oh my god I'm so sorry I just my heart was just in my throat I think I really believed it. Um, <laughs> uh, wow. Um, let's see. Do I miss shooting pumpkins from a cannon? You know, that reminds me. I, I, I didn't shoot pumpkins myself from the cannon. I was, I miss all the people that were the guerrilla engineers out there that were doing crazy, crazy stuff because Everywhere we went, we made friends that, you know, lifelong friends that every time we see them, we're still like, remember that time? But uh, I dug this up for Maker Magazine. Um, they wanted us to come up with what we would want our pumpkin chunkers to look like. And this is from so long ago. I wish I put a date on it. But uh, some people say Grant took it very seriously. I created this. This cannon is a French bulldog fart powered cannon called Napoleon Bonafart, right? Get it? Cause they're, they're French bulldogs. Cause I really do think you can harness the farts from a bulldog to um, create an, enough blast to chunk a pumpkin. And I think anybody who has a French bulldog agrees with me. So there you go. What is my most cherished or funny memory of Grant? Grant was like a sibling and um, I really did enjoy torturing him because like we did that to each other. Uh, we, were re we were besties for a very long time. And uh, you know, he used to love his Sharpies and always keep one on him, but he hated it when I would borrow them because apparently I always blunt the tip. And every time he found a blunted tipped Sharpie, I would hear him scream, Carrie! 
because he knew I may have borrowed it without asking. Um, but my, you know what, my funniest memory of Grant's, I've told this story before, but it really, it, it kills me. Everybody knows I'm a little bit of a germaphobe um, back in those days, especially because like there was a lot of raw meat. There was a lot of disgustingness that would happen in the shop. Um, but I came to this conclusion at some point, just, you know, anecdotally, I was noticing that men weren't washing their hands when they go to the bathroom as much as women. Like you could tell, they come out with totally dry hands. Like, so I was talking to Tori and Grant and I was like, dude, it's like you, when you go to the Comic Cons and you have to shake so many hands, it's just, it starts to feel dirty because you know, when you shake a dude's hand, sometimes you're thinking, ugh, I'm touching your penis. You, just because, they don't wash their hands when they do their business. So Grant one day was in the outhouse out on the Alameda runway. And he hears me walking by and I hear Grant scream, Hey, Carrie, I'm touching my penis. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I used all of the biological terms, so that's not inappropriate, right? Okay, onward, onward. <laughs> um, Wow, you sit next to Tori to Echo and the Bunnymen concert. Awesome. I, 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 I was not with him there. Money is no object. What's your dream car? Oh my God. So Jay Leno asked me this like um, about a week ago and I had the worst answer. And so, I mean, it wasn't the worst answer, but I, I, it, it took me by surprise because I know Tori probably have like 10 different really fancy cars like a, i want a demon or whatever um i, I said I, I want a pickup truck or a box van <laughs> like a really good one <laughs> um yeah maybe one that was kitted out i i, I don't need a fancy car uh i i, I get it, i get freaked out when i park them around i just need something i can love lumber into and not scratch things every time you get a fancy car you're always worried about going to the home depot so there you go. I'm afraid I'm just not a fancy car girl, but if you want somebody you basic, here you go. <laughs> ah. So let's see, what are some other great questions we're asking? Hmm. Carrie, did you like Dr. Stone? Yeah, the anime? Um, I really did like Dr. Stone. It's very mythbustery, you know, uh, they're creating all sorts of things and the science is pretty sound. I mean, there's, there's definitely a couple of allowances for creativity, but Dr. Stone, it's over on Crunchyroll. Yeah. And it's pretty fun. If you, if you're into anime, that's something for you. Um, what was my best sci-fi movie ever? Okay. So, uh, I, loved Blade Runner and uh, original Blade Runner because I read Neuromancer and fell in love with that idea. It was my first cyberpunk uh, movie. And from that, I uh, watched Blade Runner and I, I had that on VHS and took it with me for a very long time. Is it me or is Carrie kind of buff? <sighs> no, it's me. Welcome to the gun show. I sit here by myself and keep talking. This is going to get weirder. I swear. <laughs> I think that Tori was in love with you at the time of the Mythbusters series. I'm going to go with no. Tori and I have one of those like super close friendships where we just, it was sibling esque. Um, Tori is, uh, he's, he, Tori did fine in those days. He always had the most beautiful girlfriends. So um, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Besides, I was married at the time. Let's see, hello, Scotland. Thank you for the smiles, I love that. I should do a PSA on getting a vaccination. Yeah, I should, I would. <laughs> I, I think I just did. A little bit there. Hi, Robert. On Crash Test World, you explored the future of food. Little hearts. Yep, with uh, Monica Martinez, the founder of Don Vigito. Uh, yes. There. Oh, you're saying a lot of stuff about future foods. I'm just going to tell you that 
I love exploring the topic about the future of foods so much because it's so fascinating. We have this population that's continuing to grow. So much food is wasted while people are starving. And I love the idea that we can also create lab grown meat. Fascinating. There's, there's proteins from parts of the world that you've never, ever heard of. There's so many crazy ways to uh, feed this world. Um, and yes, I uh, went to Just Foods and ate myself a, a lab grown chicken nugget from a chicken that's still alive. I, I did it. Uh, yeah, it was created in a Petri dish and grown over a couple weeks. And it was, it was a chicken nugget. It was probably the first chicken I had, but uh, it was really weird to think that it was cells from a chicken that's running around somewhere, still alive. So yeah, that brought up the philosophical questions for me. Like, if somebody grew a carry burger and like took some cells of me, would I try it? Would I, is that cannibalism? Is it ego cannibalism? That was a myth that I wanted to do on Mythbusters. They wouldn't let me do was the uh, Fight Club myth. Uh, this is gonna be gross uh, to some of you, but some of you know I'm already kind of cuckoo and dark. Um, I, you know that in Fight Club where they take all of the fat from the liposuction um, discard and they turned it into soap and really good soap. Uh, I wanted to know if you could do that. Um, and also there was a myth at one time that recipes that involved spam in certain areas of the world were created because there was a lot of cannibalism. And um, the idea is that human meat tastes like pork. Um, now, obviously that's a really hard one to do. So I was thinking we could take, you know, that liposuction fat and make some uh, chicharrones and some pig chicharrones, maybe. I don't know, make like, like pork rinds, do a taste test. We could see if pork tastes like human. Apparently, Mythbusters thought that was really dark and gross and I got the veto on that one. Yeah. <laughs> am I okay? Yes, I am just a cuckoo and I'm doing all this AMA for probably way too long but I could talk forever. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know what, I'm gonna see if I can, does anybody wanna come on here and ask me a question in person? I'm gonna see if I can find one of y'all and just randomly bring you in. How about, uh, <laughs> let's see, you, you don't have to accept, but I'm gonna ask Rodrigo if you wanna come in. Um, <laughs> Somebody will join. Hello, Frankfurt. Random, am I ticklish? Uh, very. Oh, guest declined. See, none of you wanna come on here, so I'm just gonna read the questions. <laughs> uh, it's for Mythbusters, the Steve-O edition. Yes, that would be an amazing combination. Uh, I, I would love to check out some custom lightsabers. Uh, in Atlanta, they have those? That sounds great. Uh, Atlanta is one of my favorite places. Uh, I, I go there a bunch for Dragon Con, which I miss. That was a fun, wild, and weird party. Uh, the White Rabbit Project is, yes, unfortunately over. It was only one season on Netflix. Um, I, I don't, I don't know why. I thought it was a pretty good show, but hey. <laughs> uh, what has been my favorite project? Crash Test World, by far. I've, I've never walked away from that show without thinking that I feel like there's hope for the world because you're actually interviewing people who are trying to make a difference instead of the constant news feed of hearing about all the bad things in the world. So yes, um, that, that show has really been new for me. Uh, who is my celebrity crush? Um, Idris Elba comes to mind first. Um, he was a really good James Bond. I, I think I have a lot of them, actually. But uh, I also have a really good imagination. When I was a kid, it was Johnny Depp on 21 Jump Street. He, I thought he was pretty hot. Or Jordan Catalano, um, you know, from my so-called life. <laughs> ah, yeah. All wild. Um, let's see. The coolest thing that I ever blew up. 
I mean, I liked it when we blew up the propane tanks because, you know, C4 would be like a dap and AMSO would be like a bam, but propane would be like a fiery, fiery ball of beautiful. Um, and for me, it's all about the visuals. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, oh, uh, am I single? Yeah, uh, I, <laughs> I don't know if that's public, but yeah, I got divorced five days before pandemic. Wild, wild year, but uh, yeah, having a good time. Anyway, uh, <laughs> favorite scene in White Rabbit Project. Oh my God, easily, Tori and I at a Italian food restaurant, him all rigged up with mind controlling gears uh, or just in that uh, it would, his muscles were triggered by my controlling his muscles and uh, watching him spill his wine and spill food all over his face was amazing. It is the mind control episode of White Rabbit Project and it is pretty much the only scene you need to see in that entire, that entire show is that episode was so good. Um, Thank you about my hair color. Uh, <laughs> a cute salon in San Francisco. She's always uh, keeping me as red as possible. Um, hello from less snooty wine country in Livermore. <laughs> yes, I'm a big fan of wine, especially natural. Um, what was the most expensive thing destroyed in Mythbusters? Ah, my soul. No. Um, we destroyed a lot of really expensive cameras. I one time accidentally dropped a Civil War weapon and broke the case. And I think that was like 10 grand. Oh, maybe the bell jar from, oh, we broke a lot of expensive stuff. Uh, how hard is it to get your pyrotechnic license? I don't know. I used bomb techs. All of the explosions on Mythbusters were, um, they were training exercises. So I didn't have to do anything. Uh, they got all of the experience for me. And uh, I just got to be there and push the button, which was so fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is kind of fun. This is like uh, going to a convention, but, you know, just me by myself in a room that I've spent the last year in. Um, do I miss working on Mythbusters? Uh, I do. I miss the people. The long hours were very hard. We did work a lot and we worked constantly. Um, but I learned something every day and I got to work with my best friends. So I do, I do really miss it. Um, I really hope that uh, someday we can reunion as much as possible. What's my natural hair color? Very close to the ends. It's like blondy, but brownie. It's not quite as red. It's like honeyish, but I like more. I feel like I, I feel like I identify as a redhead, so I keep it as brilliant as possible. Um, let's see. When you make pieces of art, what inspires you? <sighs> Generally, um, I get inspired by all sorts of things, but uh, mostly things that scare me. I like to quarantine into a small space, or something that I can't get off of my mind that I'm really, really thinking about a lot. It's not really one thing, but uh, when I go see other amazing artists, I get very inspired. Uh, right now at the Legion of Honor in San Francisco, there is an artist named Wangechi Mutu, which I saw her when I was in college at the um, Museum of Modern Art. Blew me away. So I am extremely excited to go see that. Um, so other artists inspire me a lot. Uh, no, I don't have any art shows coming up, uh, but I'll probably throw more artwork on that Kickstarter for Explore Media if you guys are interested. That maybe I'll make a couple other kinds of prints available. What do I do for hobbies? Um, I love to bicycle. Um, I love to do art and sculpture. I enjoy hula hooping a lot. Um, <laughs> let's see. What other things do I do? I know I do a lot of things like, oh, I go crab fishing, which is really fun. I'm not really good at it um, compared to the people who live here, but that's my new hobby. Uh, so if you, I, I have the waiters and everything. So if you see me out there, I look like everybody else. Are there any online channels you enjoy? 
I got all the online channels, the Netflix, the Hulu, the, I, I have them all. I, I was a latchkey kid. I like television. Um, at night, I watch a lot of it when I can't sleep. Will you go to my high school prom with me? Oh, that's really sweet. Oh, but you need to invent a time machine to go back. Okay, you invent that time machine and I will, I will consider that offer. Absolutely, because I, I would take a ride in a time machine. For a minute there, I thought it was going to be inappropriate, but um, when you shot the minigun myth, uh, yes, it was a lot of fun to shoot a minigun. <laughs> the bullets poured down like rain. It was frighteningly too easy, though, because you just push a button and just all of a sudden you look over and he's like, ah, it's 80 grand worth of bullets. You're like, what? And the destruction is like, <laughs> it is crazy. Um, <laughs> I am not a hula hooper like at the festivals. No, I, I just, I, I really just do it in my backyard. I'm a backyard hula hooper. Um, I, maybe the park, sometimes the beach. Uh, maybe somebody needs to come teach me how to do it with, with fire. I would learn that. That seems pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I, I guess I gotta meet some more people who do like Burning Man. My favorite cartoon show, Rick and Morty. Uh, yeah. Rick and Morty is the bomb. Gravity Falls, freaking love Gravity Falls. Uh, have you eaten insects and would you recommend them? Yes, I am a convert to the protein source that is insects. Uh, I uh, like a good grasshopper. Um, Jenny Bucos, my friend, she showed me how to make a really good uh, chocolate chirp cookie and showed me the right flour. I can share that later if you'd like. Um, the, the recipe, not the cookies, because you know, they're in my house. But um, I really like a good cricket tostada with some good guacamole. And then you, you know, the, the Don Baguito crickets on top. I, it opened my mind. I, I tried it. I liked it. And uh, I'm down. I'm down. I think that they take up so much less energy to make than uh, other protein sources. So yes. Do guns still make you nervous after that episode? I mean, I think a good fear keeps you safe. So I'd say, sure. Yeah. Would you like to make your own gunpowder? Would like to know how to make gunpowder out. Um, for me, uh, I like to, uh, well, let me show you this stuff. See these ones back here. These ones are just masked off with different uh, metal tubing. And then I apply the different kinds of gunpowder or pistol powder that I, I know will bring different effects. Um, sometimes I'll smash down a clay onto the page to mask things off. Oh, what's my t-shirt? Moon Express. Uh, they're down at Moffett Field. They are uh, some commercial space company that's, uh, they're going to the moon. Um, uh, I don't know if they're considered a startup anymore, but years ago I went there and it's like, it's like a cool band shirt. So yeah, I'm a fan. <laughs> um, is this really live? Yes, John, this is really live. <laughs> Woo, I don't know how to prove that it's live. Um, it's live because it is 1.39 here. Yes. Do you like solar energy at, and alternative energy? Of course. I love all of that stuff. I've, I've, done a, I've, I've done a lot on the subject, more than I can even talk about. Um, wait. Deep sea diver myths you think are flawed. God, if we still had the show, come on. I would love, I loved it when people would be like, you did it wrong, do it my way. And sometimes they had a much better way of doing it. So it was, it was fun to be wrong. But that, I guess that's why I learned that I liked science because you can be wrong. Um, yeah. <laughs> do I like Nintendo, PlayStation, or, you know what? I have a Nintendo currently, but um, I would take anything. I even have two stand-up video games at my parents' house still that someday I'll bring up here, a Tempest and a Missile Command. Uh, but I'm, I'm still, I still really, really enjoy pinball the most. Any advice for budding engineers out there? Yeah, find one that's really good and go uh, intern with them. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's my advice for anybody learning to get into any field, intern. That's how I got my job with Mythbusters. I, I interned for Jamie and uh, ended up with this wackadoo career. 
Um, I thought I was going to get the special effects, but nope. I'm whatever, whatever it is that I am now. What is this? A uh, TV presenter, producer, um, hopefully someday media mogul as Explorer Media becomes amazing. Um, <laughs> oh. So what's my favorite kind of renewable energy? Okay. I, I, there is a dairy north of San Francisco that I just passed by that harnesses cow poop by gathering the methane and they actually, you know, capture it from going up into the atmosphere and at the same time can power their entire dairy off of it and create so much energy that it puts back into the grid. So the, they power everything that creates the grass that the cows eat, that they poop, that goes into the methane containment that actually powers everything that creates the dairy. I, I think if we applied this to more cattle, we could actually create so much more energy from cow farts. It always comes back to farts. I don't know. I don't know. I was Mythbusters for way too long. Ever had a myth that we disagreed over with the cast members? All the freaking time. All the time. We disagreed. All, all the time. <laughs> we've had off camera, we've had blowout fights over <laughs> busted or confirmed to the point where we almost like we're really mad but we weren't really mad. And uh, we just had to have a producer figure it out and settle it for us. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see. Oh yeah, I did get my start on Mythbusters from an exaggerated version of my butt. Uh, God, that was some old, weird tech. So 3D scanners back then were big and bulky and crazy. Um, so uh, I, I dressed in a cat suit. Um, I wasn't really working there. I was kind of an intern. So Jamie gave me $100 uh, to scan my butt. And I thought, who's going to see this weird cable show anyway? Uh, so I, and I wasn't, I clearly have no shame. So bent over a stool, got a scan of my butt. Uh, the trade was that he would show me how to use the software to make the mold and make it bigger. And I, I wanted to learn. So I got to look at a lot of, it was pornography because I need to see what a larger butt would look in the dimpling and get it all right. Cause I want it to be realistic. So I got to look at a lot of, got to, I, I had to look at a lot of, um, voluptuous woman's pornography to do that and I other interns would walk past the office where I was and just be like what are you doing <laughs> I was working I was working yeah so I got to model the giant butt and we we made it out of um this this really it was like the perfect durometer for an actual butt so unfortunately it made a great slapping noise uh this was for the airplane toilet myth and it was hanging on the wall the entire Mythbusters, but it got very dirty because people, every time they walked past, it was like a good luck thing. Like, you know, people like hit the doorway going out to play baseball, they'd slap the butt. And, um, I mean, pretty weird. <laughs> okay. I'm going to keep doing this. You know what? I'll keep doing this for maybe another 10 minutes or so, but you know, talking for an hour, I can't believe you guys keep me going. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> okay. So how, let's see, what do we got here? Yes. Mythbusters did have an amazing chemistry between the cast, but I'm going to tell you why, because we weren't cast. Um, we worked together and it just so happened that we ended up on the show because, you know, it was, it was reality television before reality television. It was when it was actually real. So that's why we called it, uh, you know, science-based reality or something instead of just reality because we weren't scripted except for the blueprints. Um, actually, you know what? I have, hold on. This, this was at our 10 years anniversary. Our, see that? Eric Haven made this for us um, and we all signed it and it's, he was our blueprint artist and he's a cartoonist and I had taken Polaroids of everybody in the shop and stuck them on here um, 
very, very funny. Look, there's Granty. This is just kind of sitting in my studio. I don't know, personal little memento. Okay. Uh, yes, I do keep in touch with Mr. Heineman. He, uh, we, we email, um, not all the time, but you know, I always check in to see how he's doing. He was quite a father figure for me. He brought me onto the show. Um, he taught me a lot. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I always, uh, he, he is somebody who made me learn how to try harder because uh, he did not accept imperfection. In fact, he would pick up something you were working on, find all the flaws that you'd been working on for so long you couldn't even see, um, and sometimes make you start from scratch because it wasn't good enough. That's how you get things done as a boss. <laughs> he was amazing. Um, yeah. So I do keep in touch with Jamie. Do uh, you want me to tell him anything for you? Well, I'm gonna, no. <laughs> how, how do I make bone set? I don't know what that means. Um, do you like the car myths? Yeah, they were fun. What I miss is going out to the Alameda runway. Uh, we had perfected how to rig up a car to be towed um, at the right speed uh, to make crashes happen where we wanted them to crash. Uh, it took a while to get there. Uh, at first, uh, we took out a couple fences, um, almost threw a couple cars over into the bay. I can't believe they let us use that place. As long as we, you know, left it clean and fixed it, they let us do whatever we wanted out there. It was kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, there will be no Tori Carey wedding. No, there won't, because Tori is actually married. Funny enough, the whole Mythbusters uh, show, I was married. Now I'm not, and he's married. That, but no, there wasn't, but that didn't mean, wow, this is life. That's awkward. That didn't mean anything. We were just best friends. Just so clear that up. Okay. I think I must be getting tired. What's the best thing you've ever blown up on TV or not? <sighs> still to be told, I do still like the propane stuff, but the garbage truck was really, really fun. That was really, really fun. Um, you were lucky enough to meet Jamie in Montreal and amazed how nice he was. Why are you amazed? He's a cool guy. He's got a good life. Favorite place to visit and why? Mm. I'm a traveler favorite place wherever I land. I, uh, I've got some favorite cities in America. I love Philadelphia. I've always had a really good time in Philadelphia. New York, always had an amazing time. Um, I always come back here to San Francisco though. This place, I really have left my heart here. I have been all around the world. Love going to Paris and Budapest, but something about a city by the sea that's so close to um, mountain bike riding and skiing and surfing and just all the flora and fauna. And I am a, I, I just love the fog. Uh, I, maybe it's because the skin is not made for tans. Nope. But uh, <laughs> I definitely like chilly weather. So we got that. What was the budget per myth? You know, you'd be surprised. Uh, we got started on a shoestring budget. We had a skeleton skeleton crew just like a cameraman second cameraman that did small cameras like gopros uh, an audio tech um maybe a, two researchers a director producer and sometimes we'd have a pa and then a host like we were it's nothing like you imagine crews to be but mythbusters uh got a lot of stuff for free uh, we asked a lot of favors. We used experts that were in academia or uh, in a field that we needed help with. Um, and I think it was so cheap because we did it up here in Northern California. Uh, so we, we didn't, we were, didn't have to use union people, I guess. It was an Australian production. So I guess they didn't need to do that. So there you go. <laughs> I would say our budget was much lower than most shows, which is probably why you can't reap produce Mythbusters because now you'd actually have to pay people. Yeah. Um, yes, Ireland would suit me. They have a lot of great fog there. <laughs> um, I miss all the Mythbusters. Yes. Um, yeah. I'm getting a couple repeat questions here. So 
Yes, I am no longer an intern. I, I really appreciate that. That is the worst job. Um, I know this because uh, when we had interns, um, I gave them the jobs that I would have done but didn't like doing. Like, hey, go clean up that refrigerator. It seems like the power went off and we had filled it with chicken guts and meat and uh, fish and now it's rotting and uh, the whole shop smells. So you clean that and I'm gonna go to lunch. <laughs> Yeah, one of my favorite bands. Oh, that's tough. Um, oh, that is tough. I just saw that the Pixies and Nine Inch Nails are going to be playing in Cleveland. Um, what? Uh, the Pixies were by far one of my favorite bands. Um, I loved Jane's Addiction back in the day, and I loved all of the, I mean, <sighs> Yeah, Yeah, Yeah's. Uh, currently, oh, this is too long a list. I, I constantly have music going on, so that's, that's, Yep. What about Canada? I don't know what that means. Uh, fan of Canada? Yes. I would, I, I would go to Canada anytime. <laughs> Sorry, Buster had the worst job. No, putting Buster back together was a worse job. I actually got injured a couple times. I, I bled from Buster. He one time fell on me um, and I got pinned and everybody was at lunch and I had to wait till somebody showed back up to get him off of me because he was too big. He was like, over 200 pounds at the time and I was stepped awkwardly underneath him on a gurney. I was trying to rock it back and forth, but I realized I was going to get hurt. So I just settled in and waited for them to come back from lunch so they could get the freaking dude off me. Anyway, so there's that. All right. Um, I'm getting tired and I have a meeting to go to. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to wrap this up. I am going to say thank you so much. Um, sorry, Jenny couldn't be here to moderate the questions for me, uh, but I don't know. I'm a little Luddite with uh, the Facebooks. I've never used Facebook Live before. More of a, I, I've done more of these on Instagram. So I will learn how to do it. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you so much. This is a thank you to everybody who backed our Kickstarter and is helping my current dream come true, which is Explorer Media. So if you haven't checked it out yet, look on my social media. It's all over the place and you can see what we are doing. Um, I am so grateful for Jenny Bukos for bringing me into Explorer Media. It is going to be so incredibly beautiful and make such a difference in the lives of young people. So, hey, uh, thank you guys. Mwah! I really adore all of you and I appreciate you coming here today. Bye.